Well, good day. Glad to hear. Welcome back, and thanks for checking back in. Hey, do us a favour. If you haven't subscribed already, do please subscribe. And also, if you like the video, hit the bell button and the like button as well. Well, this video is a bit different. If you're looking for a ride video, don't bother turn off now. This video is actually a how to do video. I don't normally do them, but uh, how this happened was that I'm a lazy prick essentially and when the floorboards for my Indian arrived, that's my Indian in Australia arrived, I thought I don't want to read the instructions, I'll do what everyone else does and look for a YouTube video. But there was no YouTube video on how to fit a set of passenger floorboards to an Indian Challenger, thus why I'm doing this. So hopefully it saves someone else a bit of time. Having said that, let's get into it. So step one, we've got to remove the existing uh, foot peg. You do this with a hex head. Um, I'm using a 516th, but a 10 M10 will do as well. So all you do is remove this, and you've got to remember you've got to keep the existing bolt to use again on the next fitting. Off. So the floorboard itself and the bracket to hold the floorboard are two separate items that come from Indian. You're not going to believe this, but together that's 440 bucks. And if I convert that to my time mates, it's about 10,000 baht. Bloody ridiculous, I know, but there's no competition because no one out there is making any alternate parts to challenge Indian. So it is what it is, I guess. The next step is to assemble this bracket right here onto this side bracket. And you'll see there's three separate drillings down the side of this so you can set the bracket at three different heights depending on I guess the length of your pillion's legs. I'm going to put it on the bottom set because I reckon that gives the pillion the most leg space. So you use an M8 hex head and there's two bolts that run through it and on the back there's nylock washers so there's no need for any um, um, tightening glue or anything like that. Um, Lock, any lock tight and you only finger tight these and the next step will be to actually fit this bracket with this on the side of it already bolted up back to the bike and you use that bolt that you took off the bike that I mentioned not to discard up front. So I'm going to put this assembly back on the bike um, to do this as I said I'm going to use this original M10 bolt that came off the bike but in this case I'm going to use some blue lock tight um, and remember you don't need to smother the bloody thing and put this bracket back on the bike. I'm going to torque this to 35 foot-pounds uh, once it's back on the bike. So that's 35 foot-pounds of torque to put this back on. Right, the next step is to get this bracket here to the angle you want. You can move this up and down, I'm just going to set it flat and you don't, as I said, you don't need a lock tight on this one because it's got nylock washers on the back. So I'm just going to down at the front, up at the back, I reckon that'll do the trick. Let's see what happens. This you use your M8 hex head for. These M8 bolts here are torqued up to 18 foot pounds of torque, and then you press in. So I've got to tell you the instructions are shit house. Then you push push in this plastic pivot here, um, just this little thing to make it a bit tidier. Um, there. All right, on to the next step. Apparently, this plastic clip here then also goes in the top there like that. I'm not sure why they would even drill that out for what purpose. I don't know, but anyway, that's what the destructions say to do. The next step is the insertion of these springs. In my fingers there you can see that I've got the spring and I've dipped it as per the instructions in some grease and then you roll it over and down the hole she goes. And you do that for the other one as well. Then you get what they call these little, they're just ball bearings, these indent balls and you dip them into grease as well as per the instructions and then you place them on top of the spring. So 
So you can see I've made a bit of a mess there, but we've got the ball bearings sitting on top of the springs. So next step is to put the actual floorboard on, and apparently you need to be very, very careful um, and get there's a little nodule here. You've got to line up that ball bearing and get that to sit into, and then you slip this this pin through. Um, I'll have a crack um, and see how we go here. If you hear me swear, apologies. You would have heard me start to swear before. Here's a tip. Don't try and put these on the bike. I got, got one on already. I'm doing the other side now. Put it in a vise and jiggle it and line it up in the vise where you can put absolute pressure downwards to get this split pin in. This split pin has to come from the front back and to do it and get enough pressure on those bloody ball bearings that we had to put in before, I've got to be honest, is a friggin' nightmare. Camera, I've just managed to slide this pivot through. I've got to tell you, this is the only way to do it. You might be lucky and jiggle it on the bike and get it through, but I couldn't, and that's why I've come over to the vise and done it on the vise. So you slide the um, you slide the pivot bolt through, and then you put the sur clip on the end, and then we'll now go and put this back on the bike. I'll show you the finished product in a moment. Here we have the finished product. looks okay and if I have to give you any advice it would be to put that pin through uh, do it in the vise not on the bike happy rides shiny side up